Hello passengers, welcome aboard Potassium World Airlines. We're departing from Bricksburg and are expecting to arrive at Brixstone in about 4 hours. Cabin crew prepare for takeoff. Hello passengers, welcome aboard Yogurt Airlines. We're departing from Bricksburg and are expecting to arrive at Bricksville in about 6 hours. Cabin crew prepare for takeoff. The world's smallest porcupine born here in Bricksburg. What socio-economic implications could this have? Wait, we're hearing word of a plane crash. Breaking, at Bricksburg Airport there was a head-on plane collision between Potassium World Airlines and Yogurt Airlines, resulting in record high damages of $137. Due to the crash, there will be no flying in or out of Bricksburg Airport. The executives are expected to lose $32 for every day it's not in operation. And an amount of casualties on par with the eruption of Pompeii. Although, to break you shall return insurance is providing substantial payouts for this accident, 23 cents for people who were involved and 15 cents for those who suffered injury. Not sure why they're getting paid less if they're injured. It's a rainy day to be an investigator for the Bricksburg Committee of Safety. Reports say a Potassium World Airlines plane collided with a Yogurt Airlines plane on runway 36. Whether or not there are any casualties, the real victims are those defenseless multi-millionaire airport executives who are expected to lose almost a 40,000th of their total net worth due to this accident. They must be protected at all costs. The situation has already gotten the better of them as they can't afford their dinosaur statue. We've got to determine the cause of the accident and do it quickly. How could this have happened? It can clearly be observed what happened here. The front of both planes have been annihilated. Oh, yuck. Potassium World Airlines and Yogurt Airlines have had a head-on collision from opposite ends of the same runway. If we want to find out what happened during takeoff, we're going to need to find the flight data recorder. It's somewhere here in the wreckage. Here's the cockpit voice recorder. It's likely unimportant for the case, so I'll send it to the Committee of Safety to use as a paperweight. Where is that flight data recorder? Oh, here it is. Okay. It appears there was precipitation and both planes had the same altitude and coordinates at the time of the crash. No surprise there, otherwise the collision wouldn't have taken place. It shows that the speed instantly dropped, which is expected. Looks like an explosion broke out 0.2 seconds after colliding. As expected, the scene is dry. Well, not literally. Either this is an impossibly unfortunate accident or there was foul play at hand. We'll need to obtain some leads and the best way to do that is getting first-hand accounts of those with crucial roles in the routine operation of the airport, the two pilots, the air traffic controller, and the mechanic. We should probably interview the air traffic controller first, then the mechanic. The pilots are probably in shock and they'll need some time to collect their thoughts. Now this is the airport control tower, sir. Here's my badge, I'm gonna pass through security. All right, now we're up here at the top, we're gonna have to interview the air traffic controller. Hello sir, what name do you go by? Leopold Marbellum. Alright Mr. Marbellum, I have some questions for you. Were you on duty this morning when the accident occurred? Yes, I clocked in at 6 a.m., as I do every morning. Only 45 minutes later would the aircraft begin communications with Bricksburg Tower. Would you recap the events of the morning for me? I told Potassium World Airlines to taxi to runway 36. Shortly thereafter, I told Yogurt Airlines to taxi to the same end of the runway. Some time later, I noticed on the radar that Yogurt Airlines was taxiing to runway 18 instead, the opposite side of the same runway. I informed Captain Kaiser of this error on the radio, but he taunted me back by replying that he would continue taxiing to runway 18. I redundantly tried to tell him to stop but all persuading was unsuccessful. I then tried to contact Potassium World Airlines, telling Captain Ansai Furrows to stop at the very least, but he too was undeterred. Eventually, the radar showed Yogurt Airlines sharing the same runway as Potassium World Airlines, directly facing it. Presumably, they were unable to spot each other due to the heavy downpour. I continued my efforts to convince either of them not to go on. But both pilots stated they were taking off as if I told them to. I watched in horror as both planes simultaneously began barreling down the runway with nothing I could do about it. Unsurprisingly, they collided. On the bright side, the first responders had a record lowest response time by arriving 23 minutes after the crash. I see, and you're telling me neither planes had obeyed orders from Bricksburg Tower? Indeed. Although, I must reiterate, it seemed as if in their own misguided way, they thought they were. 
How bizarre. Well, thank you for your time, Mr. Marbellum, and let me know if you discover anything more. If what he said is true, then my suspicions were correct. Someone must be at fault. And it would seem to be the pilots, had they not lost their minds. And if what he said was untrue, then it'd be the same deal, but with him being liable instead. Even though it seems that, like, we've already got our narrative, I'm going to need to continue this investigation to fulfill the Committee of Safety's procedures. Next up, we've got to interrogate the sole mechanic at Ricksburg Airport. Hello, sir, what's your name? My name is Brutus Conchabar. Alright, Mr. Conchabar, I have some questions for you about the accident this morning. Where were you at the time of the crash? At about 7.10 a.m. while driving, I heard a thunderous boom and a scrap of metal flew straight into my windshield. I later found out that both the scrap and the sound came from a collision at the airport this morning. Well, I hope you have good car insurance, preferably to brick you shall return insurance. Regardless, the maintenance log shows that you did routine repairs to both planes involved two days before the collision. Could you explain more fully exactly what you were working on? I fixed the flaps on the Yogurt Airlines plane, and I replaced the brake pads on both aircrafts. Well, I appreciate you being straightforward. If you ever find out any other details as to what caused this, make sure I'm the first person you tell. Good thing that what he said doesn't complicate our timeline, so perhaps a failed replacement of the brake pads would explain why the planes were unable to stop in time before the collision, assuming the pilots made any attempt to prevent the accident. To conclude my investigation, I've got to bring the pilots into questioning. Now I've received word that the pilots were not in shock, but instead remained at the scene because they've been arguing for two hours straight. Serving yogurt to your passengers as an in-flight meal is disgraceful. Yeah, well your name is four syllables long. Alright, quiet down. I've got some things to discuss about why the crash occurred. I've already spoken to the air traffic controller and the mechanic. It's clear that you two are making the voluntary muscle movements that caused the crash. Mr. Marbellum reports that neither of you were following his commands through takeoff and taxiing. Captain Kaiser taxied to the wrong side of the runway, Captain Onsiphorus continued taxiing when instructed to stop, and both of you took off without clearance. That's outlandish. I was speaking to Mr. Marbellum, and after he instructed me to taxi to runway 36, he redirected me to runway 18, and then he told me to take off. That doesn't track. Mr. Marbellum said he insistently told you to go only to runway 36, and when that failed, he told both of you to stop. Listen to the cockpit voice recorder. I swear I had followed commands exactly. We'll see about that. Oh, and you, Captain on Cyprus, you're aware you can't load passengers into a cargo plane, right? Especially not when they're inside the shipping crates? It's Potassium World Airlines entire business model, though. I guess that's something we can concern ourselves with another day. Thank you both for your time. Captain Kaiser, well at least I'm not related to a tyrant. Yes, you are. Just a Greek one, though. Yogurt Airlines, taxi to runway 36. Roger. Taxiing out to runway 36. Yogurt Airlines, the wind adjusted course. I'm going to redirect you to runway 18. Roger. Now taxiing out to runway 18. Can we take off now? Yogurt Airlines, you may take off. Roger. Yogurt Airlines taking off runway 18. Wait a minute, what is that? What Captain Kaiser said was true. The air traffic controller redirected him to taxi out to runway 18 and take off from there. No way an oversight that careless could be made. That had to be deliberate. We're going to have to confront Mr. Marbellum. Mr. Marbellum, you've got some explaining to do. What's the matter? We listened to Yogurt Airlines' cockpit voice recorder. We found out you'd given commands to Captain Kaiser to take off from runway 18. No, that can't be. I was giving orders to the contrary, and trying to bring both planes to a halt. You being your own eyewitness isn't good enough compared to the evidence against you. Well, have you considered checking the security footage of the tower? Obviously. I hadn't thought of that. How did I not think of that? Stupid, stupid, stupid. This is why my favorite song by Pink Floyd is Brain Damage. If I had only gotten accepted into University of Bricarnia, I wouldn't be so much of a nimrod. 
It's amazing that the human body can live without the frontal lobe. Yeah, well, I'm living without the frontal lobe, parietal, occipital, and temporal lobes. Are you sure you checked? Your face is convulsing. Fine, I'll take a look at it. Potassium World Airlines, taxi to runway 36. Roger, taxiing to runway 36. Yogurt Airlines, taxi to runway 36. Roger, taxiing to runway 36. Uh, Yogurt Airlines, you seem to be taxiing to runway 18. Roger, now the holding point on runway 18. Can we take off now? Yogurt Airlines, you certainly may not take off. Roger, Yogurt Airlines taking off runway 18. Can we take off now? Potassium World Airlines, halt at once. Roger, Potassium World Airlines taking off runway 36. Unbelievable. He's right, he wasn't telling Yogurt Airlines to taxi to runway 18. But then how could the message have been heard on the cockpit voice recorder? What if someone other than Mr. Marbellum gave that command to Captain Kaiser? As a matter of fact, I think I know who did. Excuse me, sir, but we're gonna have to take you in. Take me in under your roof. No, take you in for questioning about the crash of Potassium World Airlines and Yogurt Airlines. Can I see your warrant? No, but I totally have one. Man, I cannot catch a break today. Besides, I have no reason to cause that crash. Your boss cut your pay last week. Okay, fine. I admit it. But how did you know? The biggest continuity error was between the cockpit voice recorder and the security footage. The radio of one wasn't aligning with the other, and there's only one person who's had access to the radios all week. You, the mechanic. You must have tampered with the radios and given instructions to the pilot without them realizing, or Mr. Marbellum realizing. You must have simulated the storm using an airport-sized rain machine. No, I simply don't have the capital to buy and operate such a gargantuan machine. Oh, well, either way you're going to prison for a long time. Drat. The best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. Curse you, Inspector Splinoli. Who is he talking to? It's nice to know that all the people involved now recovering at the St. Bricktoic Hospital finally feel the vindication of justice being served. But the real winners are those multi-millionaire airport executives because they can finally afford their dinosaur statue.